Morning guys, Mac from Pattern Traders, December 29th, Friday, a few more days until the year and real quick update on BTC and what, I, what I'm expecting in the upcoming few days and weeks. Relatively still healthy, we're, we're creating ascending supports, meaning like our supports are increasing in value. I'm not afraid of what I'm looking at right now, I still think we're going to potentially go relatively higher. Now there is a scenario where BTC does do this, does create a fake out to the downside before continuing its impulse move to the top side now keep this in mind guys uh, i've been in this space for quite some time and i've and i've seen this behavior happen over and over and over again when btc does these impulse moves to the top side it then just creates it goes into like a consolidation range that consolidation range could last anywhere between a few days and a few weeks before the next impulse move right so if this was your first impulse over here right this is your first impulse over here it took place we broke out from twenty eight thousand dollars and then you officially made a higher high between 31 and 32k and we broke out what did we do in this whole particular range where's my thing here we go from here until here all we did was basically accumulate in an ascending pattern right we were just creating we were reaccumulating but in ascending patterns the supports just kept getting higher and higher and higher now we did the same thing once we broke above 34 37 thousand dollars we did an impulse move to the top side as you see over here and now what are we doing again we are creating another range another consolidation normally this doesn't end sorry guys this doesn't end in a retracement of the whole consolidation where you just just break back down right under thirty eight thousand dollars anybody that assumes that this is what's gonna happen hasn't been in the space long enough right in a bullish scenario now if we're still overall bearish this is very 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 favorable but we're not guys we're not bearish at all like if you look at the higher time frame those who are let's just say a little bit new to the space let's go to a new chart all you're seeing right now guys is a low a higher low equal lows that are higher lows and we just keep making highs well equal highs higher highs higher highs higher highs so we are technically structurally speaking on a weekly time frame very bullish and don't forget the most important thing that you need to identify is where are we in this space right now we are back in the previous consolidation range that took us down to freaking 15 or 16 thousand dollars so once you break above this 31 32 thousand dollar uh, tag and you're back into this particular range sky is the limit man sky is the limit right at the end of the day you're able to target any one of these particular highs before you actually see some real distribution back down and we haven't touched any high yet on the higher time frame we haven't and the first high that we need to we need to tap the liquidity call that a high liquidity whatever you want to call it it's all the same bojo forty eight thousand two hundred dollars is the first high that when we do happen to go up there and tap it that is when i need to be aware of the situation and be like yo mike okay we're at that first liquidity area on the higher time frame start exiting start getting into stables i get it people want to end up holding positions from fifteen thousand dollars all the way up to fucking 150k if that's the case if that's your type of positioning cool i'm not going to do that the minute we get to 48.2 or even if we do happen to wick over here into that 50 50 one point eight area i'm out of this market guys and then i'm gonna wait i'm gonna position myself i'm gonna be patient and then i'm gonna see what happens whether this is going to be something along the lines of this oops where's this where's this little thing over here hold on hold on i don't know where it is here we go this thing whether it's something like this where you go up come back down and then you break up cool i'll just rebuy it once we break above the 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 uh, the 51.8 range right because at the end of the day if you do have to get above this 51.8 51.9 you're going straight for 60s your next area of interest is going to be anywhere between 59 and 60 thousand dollars so there's so much potential there's no reason to risk it if we're at that high time frame resistance area and again 48.2 the reason why that level is significant is because it is the previous yearly high plus it is the first high time frame liquidity level that we are attacking right so anyway back to the charts going to lower time frame four hour um so again this is this is a definite possible scenario where we go back down to 38k and fill up all this fill up what the hell did i do here fill up all this empty space but i'm not favoring it okay what i'm favoring right now is that we're going to consolidate in this particular tight little range come sometime 
uh, before the first or two, before the first or second week of January, which is very important. I'll tell you why this is important. I wanted to make that video because of this. Two things are going to take place come January, right? We're going to have this, okay? And then we're going to have this. I don't want the month. I want the yearly open. Let's make it black. Okay. Two things are taking place in January, okay? Let's go to a new chart. So this way you can see it. Close all this. Go to daily. The quarterly VWAP is currently sitting at $36,000. Currently. So what's going to happen is when this quarterly VWAP in January sets and we get a new quarter q1 of 2024 this is officially going to become wherever this ends which i'm pretty sure it's going to end up between 36 and 38 thousand dollars it's going to be the magnet to whatever we go wherever we go the magnet will be this particular quarterly vwap so even if we do happen to go to 48,000 or 51,000, i will bet you anything that we're going to come right back down to revisit this particular quarterly vwap within the next three to four months so that is basically what I'm waiting for. I'm going to accumulate my stables on the next pump up and I'm going to reload them on the retest of this particular quarterly view app. That is my strategy. I'm saying it from now. It's this way people don't say that and say anything. All I'm waiting for is the Q1 VWAP to get set on the map. The Q4 VWAP to be identified wherever we stop. And the most important thing is the yearly open. Now, if I close the VWAPs and then I just show you the yearly opens, right, of what took place in the past couple of years, go to Bitstamp. More, there's more freaking, uh, let's get rid of this stuff because we don't need this right now. Let's make these. Okay. Again, guys, I'm just talking straight, straight strategy. I'm not telling you level to level play. This is, it's a very simple strategy when you're looking at the bigger picture and you're actually playing with spot and not needing to identify the particular bottom. The yearly opens have either set the tops or set the bottoms, okay? So no matter what happens, when your yearly open opens up, right? Yearly open of 2018, boom, we retested it and we collapsed. Yearly open of 19, boom, we retested it and we started this fucking massive bull market to the top side. The yearly open over here was obviously quite different. It was the COVID dump, whatever took place here. It is what it is. Once it got reclaimed, we started the bull market. Then let's talk about the Elon range. This is the Elon range. If you guys know that, remember the Elon range, the Dodge? dogecoin whatever the fuck it's called so this yearly open boom all-time highs deviation collapse then what happened in 2022 yearly open retested and collapsed now yearly open is sitting where right now the current 2023 yearly open is 16,054 i've got dms telling me because i've i've spoken to a few people about this and i've got dms telling me that we're probably looking at another black swan event where we're likely more likely than not going to get something along the lines of this boom and then come all the way back down to do what we did over here to retest this yearly open down here no i i can't see that happening if that's the case and we go all the way down here we're likely going to end up tapping the freaking monthly support which is going to be at thirteen thousand and change what are we 13 and change what is this 13.9 it doesn't mean that we can't go to 150 where's 150 to 150,000 and then come back down but is that even possible look at this dump is that possible 90 percent go all the way up to 150 130 and come back down and retest the monthly assuming that this whole thing was just one big consolidation before the leg up into an actual collapse i don't think that's possible but if you look at the previous dumps they haven't been more than 87 percent right it's between 80 and 87 percent yes 80 and 87 percent what makes this particular dump going to different to end up being 90 unless we actually stop at 130s or 120s and then you could actually say it's going to be an 80 percent dump now this makes sense now this does make sense why we only dumped 70 percent from the top right we only dumped i don't even know how much we dumped 77 percent from the from the top from the previous all-time highs and we we, we basically <clears throat> kind of like skimmed the monthly uh, support at 13.8. Anyway, I'm not even talking about that right now because we're nowhere near that. The only thing I want to announce from now, so you guys be aware of, the yearly open is very important. Once that yearly open opens up, 
wherever it opens up, assuming it's going to be between forty-two and forty-five thousand dollars, that is your mark. We're going to be playing ping pong with that level. So if we end up getting a retest of this and then a collapse, that's not going to be a good sign, right? So just keep in mind that this is your yearly high, previous yearly high over here, right? We have it. I mean, I thought I had it. Where is this thing? Did I do it the right thing? No, this is the right thing. Previous yearly high. 48,000, right, and change, 48, whatever it is, 48.1, 48.2, whatever the hell it is. Keep that in mind, and then um, show prices, this way it's a lot easier, 48.2. So when we happen to get a yearly open, if we do happen to take the previous yearly high out from a liquidity perspective, all you need to assume is that you need additional, this is not financial advice, you need additional capital, additional stables to buy the dip. Because when the dip does come, it's going to be an opportunity that you're probably not going to get for the next maybe year or two. So that's how I'm playing this right now. There is nothing else I want to I want to address. Love it or level play, guys. Um, you know, if you're active on in the Discord, you're just seeing my positions when I'm going in and out. It doesn't really matter. Ethereum. I'm not touching my Ethereum until we get to at least three thousand dollars. This is a this to me is a, a, a no-brainer long. Um, people that are assuming that this is a SFP, I need to argue that. I'm going to argue the fact that this is not an SFP. I am balls deep, long in Ethereum. I love it. Everything about it looks good to me. There's nothing negative about Ethereum other than the fact that it takes forever to move and it's a shit coin. <laughs> Otherwise, it looks good. Most important factor for me is this RSX in the daily. I've stated it. This is very bullish. This is not bearish yet. Now, if we do happen to get an algo fire somewhere down here, I'm probably going to have to shave a little bit off my Ethereum because we're looking at probably going down to at least... 1900 to 2000 but on the lower time frame we should not break $2,200 guys we should not break $2,200 so the way it works with Ethereum is the same as BTC when you get an impulse to the top side like we did over here we broke market structure to the top side right we broke market structure to the top side everybody's saying oh we actually deviated the the, the top and this is going to be a retest and now we're going to start trickling down and what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to take out these these particular lows because this is all liquidity down here right it's all liquidity down here um and target is 2000 very valid very valid if the oscillators favored that but they don't so normally in a range perspective i am 100 percent with you the minute you see a deviation and a break back into the range you're out I'm with you 100%. I just can't favor that scenario with the way the oscillators look. That's all. So um, what am I looking at for Ethereum right now? <clears throat> Buying anything down to 22. Open up your order block indicator. It's very simple, right? 12 hour, I think the four hour had it too. Did it or is it just 12 hour had it? Or the daily, I forgot. I know the 12 hour, the daily, there we go, daily. So do this, it's a lot easier, cleaner. Highlight remaining order block so this way it's not confusing. Get rid of all this. Um, get rid of the exhaustion line for one moment okay so what am i looking at right now we are sitting right above the daily order block last time we were at a daily order block what do we do over here we bounce right into it you guys all know what an order block is it's going to be either supply zone or demand zone bullish or bearish this on the green one is a bullish order block which is the demand zone but unfortunately for us ethereum is still sitting in a daily bearish order block which is a supply zone which more likely than not people sell in this particular zone but we've been in here for so long that when you consolidate in an order block you're more likely than not going to break above it or break below it now given that we're consolidating in here for over a week how long has this been almost a month guys this is going to end up breaking to the top side and I'm not selling any of my Ethereum until at least twenty-seven to three thousand dollars. Twenty-seven hundred to three thousand dollars, right? That is what I'm targeting. Any move back down to, to this daily order block is a buy zone for me, twenty-two point seven five. Um, and I am assuming that we're not gonna break twenty-one fifty anytime soon. Now, if I am wrong and we do happen to go for the main entry, it's gonna be down here again, guys. You want to end up buying as much Ethereum as you want between $1,900 and $2,000. This daily order block, it's not going to break. I personally think it's not. This is not financial advice, but I can't see this order block breaking, especially not on the first attempt, right? So if you zoom out completely, I think it was a three-day or it was the weekly, a three-day. There you go. The three-day has a fresh 
auto block at 2077 this is not breaking man this is not breaking guys uh, and then you have a mitigation block as well on the flip side all the way over here the mitigation block is why I'm so bullish on Ethereum right now a mitigation block is a bearish block or a bullish block that gets flipped that's why the color of the block of the candle stays as is so the color of this candle is red which means that it was a bearish block that turned into a bullish mitigation block it's a flip in the in, in the demand this used to be a supply a demand a supply zone and now it's called the demand zone it's a mitigation block it got mitigated so resistance over here flip to support over here and obviously target is up here i don't know i can't say it any simpler than this right guys cheers trade safe the only altcoins that i care right now that i'm kind of like heavily invested in i'm kind of like a little too heavily invested in crv um the reason why i got into crv was because weekly this block right here i want to target this weekly block so i'm sitting in a pretty freaking heavy bag from here and a pretty heavy bag from here uh so i should have taken some profit man but i didn't whatever the case is anyway my target is in here my crv target and then don't forget i gotta show this to you guys three days it's my biggest altcoin right now currently sitting at right so this can't get any more bullish to me consolidation above a breakout consolidation that took us freaking 288 days to break above but that's not even the important part this is the important part hold on where is it the weekly here we go weekly so you see the get rid of this for one moment guys you see the histo the histo didn't break out yet guys the histo did not break out yet guys the histo didn't break out yet there's no histo above the zero line it didn't break out yet this is going to be a massive move to the top side when it breaks out guys cheers it's my biggest bag that i'm holding right now um and obviously there's a lot of other shit that i'm holding iov gog whatever the case is but crv right now relatively speaking is by far my biggest uh crypto token holding from the newly added on in the past couple of months otherwise this is strictly a trade i'm not holding this for long term uh long term holds you guys know what i'm holding which i'm not going to even discuss or talk about yet otherwise guys cheers trade safe dms are always open feel free to hit me up